Today's IKFF lesson is on the snatch, specifically dealing with the trajectory, which is the direction and angle that the kettlebell is moving, both on the upward component and the downward component. Now, before I get into the lesson, keep in mind that there is going to be individual differences always, even among the, the most accomplished lifters in the world. You'll see some differences in how they move the bell or how it looks. This is going to be relative more to uh, body types, to different sizes, different structures, different inherent strengths and weaknesses. But what I want to cover with these sessions as much as possible is the common denominators. We want to make sure that we're eliminating any gross errors and paying attention to good biomechanics and then you can you can apply these principles and find a method that is suitable for your individual body. So in a future lesson I'll get into some of the most common variations of snatch in terms of idiosyncrasies such as rising on the toes or rocking back on the heels or going diagonal or doing a leg dip and so on. But for the purpose of this particular lesson I'm just going to focus on the actual angle, tra the trajectory of the bell on the upward and downward component. Okay? Breathing will also be covered in a separate session, so we just focus on one main point at a time. So what we're doing with the snatch here is we have the backswing, that's the loading component, and then we want to generate as much speed and power at the beginning of the extension, at the first part. We want this to be as powerful as possible, so the bell's moving fast, so by the time it gets to the lockout, it's momentum carrying it there. So you're not having to use so much muscular effort from your arm, but you're using your lower body to generate the force and then just carrying through with the momentum. Okay? And the way that is accomplished is by connecting the arm to the body and extending the knees and extending the hips. So you can refer to one of the earlier sessions, session number two, where I explain how to connect the arm to the body using the swing but the same method will be applied for the snatch. Okay. So I'm going to start with a light kettlebell, just a 10 kilo, so I can really break this down in individual components. Our challenge here is first we need to get maximal extension and second we need to try to get the most direct path of flight. So here's what we don't want is to have the bell take a very circuitous path to where I'm coming all the way around. Okay? Big looping movement all the way around. Okay? That's going to make a lot of extra work each rep for you. Okay? What we want is to shorten the movement. At the same time, you also don't want a pure vertical because if I'm just coming straight up and straight down, then there's really no swing. Okay? It's really just arm. So it's not purely vertical and it's certainly not so horizontal, it's actually a combination of the two. And the reason being, from the backswing, with the initial extension, the arm connected to the body, I'm using my upper thigh, hip, and torso to push the arm, to buttress the arm, and get that full extension. Okay? I have to have that full extension. So if I'm just pulling from here, I don't have the extension yet. So I don't have maximal power, I have to use too much effort from my arm. I want here. Okay? Now I have maximum extension. The hips are in front of the shoulders. I've reached my maximum extension. I can't extend anymore or I'll be overextended. So I want maximum extension. But now that I have maximum extension, thus maximal expression of power, the next point is I want to go up, not out. So I'm actually going to bring the kettlebell in to me so that it sits vertically over the base of support and then I'm going to finish. So it's actually three distinctive phases all done smoothly so it turns out to be one smooth movement with three phases. So it's one, the first part, here, maximal speed and extension. Here, okay? But once I reach this full extension, here, I haven't extended yet. Extend. Once I reach this, then I pull it in, get it closer to the body. Then, as I'm throwing the bell up, I move my hand inside and it locks out. Okay? So it's three phases. It's one, 
It's one, two, one, two, three. Okay, then once you have the idea, you go a little bit heavier. For example, a 16 kilo. Same idea, so I get full extension, maximal extension, then pull in, and then finish. Okay, and then once you have the idea with that, you can grab a working weight, for example, a 24 kilo, or whatever is a comfortable weight for you. And full extension, speed here, pull it in, and then up. So there's three distinctive phases. Okay, we'll get into the uh, particulars of the breathing in another session. Again, there's more than one breathing mechanic or breathing rhythm depending on what your work goal is. And another point will be the leg position. At the back of the swing, you will see some lifters actually extend the knees straight. And this has several reasons, but this is more of a I don't want to say an advanced technique, but it's for advanced practice. It is a way to conserve energy, to extend the backswing, and also to generate a rocking motion with the legs, which is going to give you more power. But for general fitness component, I would suggest just keeping the legs bent until you develop the rhythm, and then you can start experimenting with pushing the legs back. So I'll cover that in detail in a future session. Okay. So that's the upward component. So I load, I use my body connected to the arm to get full extension. Now the momentum, the arm drifts, it's fully horizontal here. Now I'm going to pull it in and then I'm going to lock it out.